I'm Allison. I actually graduated from uh, Ponyo High School in Johor Bahru. Um, after that, after that, I took ACCA uh, qualifications. Um, after I graduated from ACCA, I joined one of the big four, Ernst and Young. When I was with Ernst and Young, um, my audit clients actually are the real estate player in Singapore. So after three to five years um, of experience in audit, then I decided I, I should join uh, one of my clients. Um, so after that, I joined uh, uh, a listed call in, in Singapore, which focus uh, investing in uh, real estate assets. Right now, uh, I'm with a private equity investment company, also focused in real estate uh, in Asia Pacific. Thank you, Elson. Um, Edwin, would you like to go next? Uh, Edwin, you're, you're muted at the moment, sorry. Sorry guys, yeah, I was muted. Now, good to see all of you guys, although I'm just looking at pictures, right? Um, some of you. Yeah, um, my name is Edwin. Uh, I am originally from Penang. I've been in Singapore for, I think, coming to like, you know, 11, 12 years already. So, Previously was from Inti. Uh, before Inti, I was from St. Xavier's Institution. That's where my secondary school is. And went on to Inti to do uh, my AUP program. I was supposed to go over to the States, you know, but I found out that SIM had this uh, UB program, which I, which I feel that it was something that was better than flying over there. So I decided to come over here, you know, and I would say that, you know, history speaks for itself. Um, made the right choice to be in Singapore. Um, after that, in my last year, what I did was I got an internship with Singapore's largest uh, financial advisory. You know, I was doing business development with them for quite a bit. And after that, con converted into a consultant and basically didn't turn back, you know, uh, from, from there, moved on to um, an insurance company. I'm now with Prudential. So I'm one of the senior consultants there now. Uh, we've been with them for a few years now. So pretty much where I started back in Penang until now, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting how the journey has, has moved on and we'll share a little bit more as we go on later. So feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, so there's just a little bit a li uh, of, of where I am, where I come from. Yep, over to you, Aaron. Okay, hi. So uh, my name is Aaron. So I, maybe like similar to some of you guys, I was a graduate from SPM and then I proceeded to take my A-level in Soundway College, JV. And after that, there was the, uh, a blank period where I was struggling, maybe like some of you guys, like which you need to take on. So fortunately enough, I met SIM. So I signed up for a, a DMS, Diploma in Management Studies. And after that, I signed up for a uh, Economics and Finance in RMIT for three SAMs. And for my last semester, I actually opted up for the exchange program in Melbourne. So I literally graduated in Melbourne and I came back and I got my first job in UB. And it's been a year since I'm uh, working in the banking industry. Okay, thank you, Erin. So, um, well, all of you have had your experience um, studying in both Malaysia and Singapore. So, um, if you could share, maybe why did you decide to come into Singapore? And like, you know, did you find that there were like any extreme differences between being in Malaysia and in Singapore? Um, any of you can start first. Elson, you can go first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um. I actually don't find much difference between um, you know, the, the environment in Singapore and Malaysia. But of course, um, um, being, being one of the uh, largest cities, Singapore actually has, um, to me, has a lot of uh, finance opportunity because there's a lot of MNC, um, has their regional headquarters here. And yep. then in terms of infrastructure, is pretty established. So I, I guess when I change, when I shift from Malaysia to, to Singapore, I think um, I, I, I didn't spend much time to readapt to the environment here. To me, it's pretty close. Um, but of course, Singapore is it just in, um, run in a more efficient matter relatively to uh, Malaysia. But um, generally, the environment is, is quite close, I would say. And then the people here is actually quite close because speak English, Mandarin, so, yeah, I, I don't see a big gap. Mm. Over to you, Evan. Yeah, I think, I, I, think um, I do agree with what Elton said. You know, culturally, we are very similar. And I mean, the question in my mind then was like, why not Singapore, right? It's the closest to, to home. 
Um, we still get all the good food. We still get whatever we can find. You know, you want late suppers, we have it here. Yeah, but I mean, on a serious point is that um, in terms of perspective and also once you graduate, what I had in mind back then was, uh, am I able to secure a, a, a good career? You know, and I think Singapore is a place where, like what Alson mentioned, you know, it is, it is the financial hub in Southeast Asia. You know, everyone comes in here, you know, it's a very established country and it's like a stepping stone to, to a lot of things. So, you know, for me personally, um, apart from, you know, getting a little bit more, uh, I mean, Penang is a little bit more relaxed, right, more chill and Singapore is a little bit more fast paced. I think that's the only thing that I had to adapt to, which to be honest, took me less than a month because there's so many things to do here and, and there's a lot of excitement. So if you enjoy excitement, right, you know, Singapore is something where I would say, yeah, it's a very nice place to be at. Yeah. Okay. All right, Aaron, yeah, anything? Okay. All right. So when, uh, when people mention about finance, the first few countries came to our mind would definitely be US, probably China, and even Singapore itself. So one thing I picked up Singapore was, firstly, it was close to home. Because before then, I actually almost signed up for Taylor College in KL. I already packed my stuff. Ah. I, already, I already bought all the cables, all the, uh, the uh, <laughs> my shirt, my luggage, just everything all packed, all done. Then suddenly there was this friend of mine, like just dropped me a call, like, hey, why not just uh, try out SIS? So when we are picking university, one thing always came to my mind is what happens after I graduate? Yeah. So we'll put ourselves in that scenario that if I'm studying KL, I will most likely end up in KL. So yeah, just true. for the start, I just want to try out different things like, hey, why not try out Singapore? And uh, the fees wise, if you times three back to Ringgit, I'm also paying the same cost roughly. So all right, I SIM just came to my mind, so I signed up for that. And for culture wise, I believe most of you has came in, has like actually came into Singapore before. So culture wise, not much difference, but for the, um, if you can see SIM just now during the, uh, the video session, there you can see people from Indonesia, yeah, people from Korea. Right people from Myanmar. So from there, it's a really good place for you to network around those people from ASEAN, especially. And uh, the people you mingle around with, they are not just Malaysian, they are Singaporean, they are like people from Vietnam. Yeah, it's a pretty really right? interesting place. Yeah. It's a multi <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's an international true. school in, in Singapore. So it's a really good start. And if you want to have further your career in, in finance, Singapore is honestly one of the few, country, few leading countries as a financial Yeah. And for their banking and their, their finance um, advancement, it's, I would say it's pretty one of the top notch in the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as a Malaysian finding your first job in Singapore, do you find it tough or do you actually think that, you know, because, you know, uh, Singapore generally is very meritocracy uh, uh, country, right? They, they, they go by merit. So do you find it like it was quite okay as long as you'd say you did well in your interview or do you find that there was there were anything that you know you that was slightly challenging and how you overcame it? Mm, I will say actually um, not very challenging because uh, at the end as long as you demonstrate that you have the right skill set and then you have the right experience so uh, I, I don't think it's, it's difficult to, to land a job here um, at the end, is because because right now I'm also um, um, or, uh, a manager of a, of a company. So uh, when when I hire a team member, a lot of time I, I don't really look at um, where they come from, but rather like whether they have the right experience, and then whether these people will have the right chemistry that will interact with the teams. So um, I, I I think that that is one of the um, a uh, special point in Singapore because being a uh, one of the you know uh, largest finance hub, finance hub in in the world, a lot of time people just look at um, who you are rather than where you come from and what you can bring to the team rather than you know um, purely uh, what kind of qualifications you have. A lot of time here, um, people looking at skill uh, and and the chemistry that you can bring to the team. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I do see that uh, more and more. So even in our industry, you know, even in our in insurance industry, you know, we do do some hiring in like internships and stuff. And I think one of the things that we look at now, uh, ever since when we started, right, is really about what you can bring to the table. 
you know, of course, qualifications does matter, you know, like, I mean, how well you do and, and how, how personable you are as a person. But I think at the end of the day, it's really uh, what you can bring to the team, like what else else is it, you know, because it's about, it's not about paper qualification anymore. Um, it's really about how holistic as a person you can be. So I, I feel that getting a position here, you know, but even back then when I look back, how many years now? I think six years. Yeah, six years ago, right? I mean, when we graduated, um, the first thing I would expect actually, you know, people will ask, which university are you from? To be honest, they didn't even ask that. You know, they asked me other questions, mm. which, 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 like, you know, like, how would you settle or how would you handle certain situations? You know, how are you in school? What, what do you used to do? And then after that, they asked you actually, um, which university did you graduate from? You know, so when I came back from the interview, I, I, I was actually thinking like, wow, you know, nowadays people don't really um, put so much focus on actually uh, where you come from, you know, but rather what you can bring to the table. Yeah. 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 My turn, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. So you can, as you all can see, Edwin and Nelson, they are so much senior than me. So I was, I'm actually one of the youngest, maybe closer to your age, but similarly, my interview experience was exactly the same as yours. So I was actually told to prepare my certificate, all my, um, um, the, uh, the results slip and whatever. So when I brought it in, the interviewer never even asked me, how do I do? Like, do I do well for my studies? They didn't even check my, my, like, the, all the grades I have. So they were asking me, so what do you know about this job? First, I believe before you go for an interview photo, you have to really understand what do you actually apply into. Do some research and they will eventually ask you, so we're gonna, how, if we hire you, what is it gonna benefit us? So you really have to present yourself, more like selling yourself, rather than selling my, 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 my uh, academically, uh, academic results. More like selling yourself, selling your personality. So if the interviewer finds that you are actually a good fit to the role, yeah, they'll actually hire you. So it's all how you play the game. How to like sell self that's the uh break yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah we can see that you know um results and uh, academic achievement is one thing right but it's also what you have uh, yeah. what you can bring to the table so in terms of studying in sim for example like what do you think what helped you to you know get your first job or your the job for elson like this job subsequently yeah so what what do you think you know um has helped you know in terms of from sim yeah, because um, I took ACCA first, then subsequently I took a master in uh, professional accounts uh, accountancy with SIM. So um, during the program, I, I guess uh, the biggest takeaway for me is um, critical thinking. So at that point of time, I, I, I very appreciate that the program was designed pretty well because um, the whole program, this master is, is actually a path for ACCA student, which mainly focus on the exams and, and, and you know, just, pay, just studies. But then um, this master actually prepared me to, to write a papers and then also um, to present how to put your thought into papers because in ACCA the, the structure is a little bit different it's like uh, in three hours you just put everything what you know into the paper and then then maybe two months later then you will know whether you pass it or not but then this master program actually prepare me um, like uh, preparing a papers um, so let's say um, there's some discussion at that point of time I still remember uh, was the Brexit uh, that uh, was the biggest biggest uh, global topic at that point of time. And so uh, the school actually um, uh, has a lecturer that is very experienced in finance. So from his point of view, then he guide us like, okay, what's the thing that you need to consider? So actually from there, I, I start to realize, okay, all those I, I, I have been, I have uh, like, at that point of time, I think I have 10 years of, 10 plus years of working experience, but actually it opened a new window for me to see the finance world in a different perspective. So I, I really appreciate that. And then at the same time, because um, as I um, actually also understand that, you know, being an ACC student, a lot of us may have the technical knowledge, like the, the accounting knowledge, but uh, we might need some help in terms of preparing the paper. So at the same time, actually, the school also uh, prepare a writing course for us to, to guide us on how to prepare the table, you know, because uh, in business, how we write or in academy, how we write the paper um, are 
pretty different. You know how to present your thought to the uh, to to the folks in in University of London in London, uh, versus you write a very straightforward email, efficient email, are pretty different. So I I I very appreciate, and then I I think I I learn a lot from the master program, and it also prepared me for um, also uh, some advancement in my career. Thank you, Elson. So Elson was part of our master's program with UOL. So it's a master's in professional accountancy. And um, this program, um, Elson took it part-time, right, for a year. Yeah, and you can also take it full-time for half a year. And this is basically uh, for students that have gone through ACCA. So if you may be interested or any of your friends may be interested, yeah, that, that's one of the programs that we have. So uh, I'll pass the time to Edwin. Okay, uh, so for me, what really prepared me, I would say, um, SIMUB, right, University of Buffalo, um, presents a very holistic feel to the whole program, you know. I mean, personally, for those who like to study, great, you know, but I'm one that I prefer to be hands-on, you know, and I think this program that I took that, that, that time uh, allows you to be that because as much as um, exam is, is, is critical, but it's more of like really building the person up on how, you, how can you critically handle um, situations. So in, in, I mean, the time when I was here, you know, there are a lot of project works, there are a lot of uh, time where we interact with one another and not just in the, in the classroom, but also outside, you know, and for me, I mean, student council was something that I was in, I was a part of, I was also with the, with the track and field team. Um, I mean, all of these things did shape uh, the person I became, you know, when I graduated. And the best part is that it's not just then, but even now we are still pretty much very connected to the alumni. Yeah, and that is very important. I think at the end of the day, when you secure a, a career in the future, networking is actually one of the biggest things, you know, and, and a good alumni that, that provides that, right, adds a very, very uh, positive, positive point to it. So, I mean, for me, the holistic package of it is very important. So when I came in here, I, it felt like home because it is something that I enjoy, uh, you know, when I'm in classrooms, you know, the lecturers are very, they're very vocal. You know, they don't just like say, okay, you know, you finish this project, that's it. But they're very, um, they care about how you're doing, you know, as a person, you know, and that's something where I would say maybe it's because it's the, it's the US program, you know, they're all very uh, politically nice, right? But I think it's more so at the end of the day, it's really being able to holistically groom us up as students then and then when we do go out to the working world, um, we are able to, to handle different situations. So I think how that prepared me in a way was, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach, uh, I, I would say, yeah, personally for me. Yes, I mean, so yeah, um, we've also heard from fellow alumni Jeremy uh, previously and he also shared that, you know, what UB does is, you know, he make, um, the school life is fun. You know, like mm. the whole uh, student life, the whole um, program itself, you know, was fun. And that made studying a lot more interesting. Yep. And you know, like, as you know, you know, he has gone on to study his uh, master's and PhD since. And it's also because of the good experience he's had in his undergraduate program. So yep. we will sure. go a bit more into your student life later. Uh, meanwhile, we sure, will sure. Turn to share a bit. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so firstly, as I mentioned just now, I was a diploma student. So after A level, I took in EMS. So one thing I chose EMS is because I actually graduated from a science field. So I have no exposure, totally zero towards business. So DMS is actually a mixture of everything you can find. You can find accountancy, you can see finance, you can even see HR, all those kind of uh, this kind of like a study material. So if you are still unaware, do you want to give it uh, like uh, before you can actually go for the uh, your final choice? Is something it's a wider a, a field for you to explore in DMS. So after a year and a half in DMS, there was another like a, a junction for myself. And then the really popular courses for finance will be UOL or RMIT. So for a person like me, I prefer like a bite size because UOL is one shot. It's like a it's like a one it's like a one shot exam final exam. So I prefer to take something like bite size. So there was say for in RMIT, there's a, a mid test and then presentations. So presentation wise, we are doing like more assignments. 
and presentation yeah. actually makes me more confident. So like for as for instance, like right now we are presenting. Yeah. <laughs> so it's literally you are actually developing your skills along the way, and you are working together with your friends, with your peers to actually get the assignment done. It's not just by your own self. It's like how you manage with your friends. How do you actually organize everything neatly? Uh, organize the task, everything. And one thing about MIT is the exchange program, which I'm really I'm grateful for because uh, it was the last year of my stand. So I just wanted to give it one last shot. This is my only chance. So I actually signed up for the uh, exchange in Melbourne. So it was actually really eye opening stuff. Like, and, um, and in school, in SIM, normally it's like uh, lecturer and tutorial, we are all combined together. But in, in RMIT, Melbourne specifically, you are able to manage your time better. Like, okay, for tutorial, it's actually one hour. So I put it on a Friday. And for lecture, for instance, maybe two hours. I can actually split them to different days. So at the end time, I can actually do some like traveling, time. And uh, yeah, it's a really uh, complete experience compared to in Singapore. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you can see that for Aaron, because he took the RMIT program and also opted to go to Australia for a semester, so he basically gets like the best of both worlds huh? to, to be able to be <laughs> in Singapore and also experience the, the, the experience over in Australia. Yeah, so um, yeah, so back to the student life part. So for um, Aaron first, um, were you part of mm. any um, uh, extracurricular in, in, in SIM back then? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I signed up from Maxim, Malaysian Society. And uh, I wasn't involved in the committee, but I almost took part of all their events. So we have sports every, I think every Tuesday or Thursday. And we have CNY, we have all those like celebrations together. So one thing about Maxim is you are actually mingling along with Malaysian people you know of. Maybe someone probably staying in your own taman, for instance, nice. if you're neighbors as well. Nice. Yeah, so it's a really home feeling. So back then when I was like a bit homesick, and do some mingling people with, uh, in, in uh, Maxim itself. It's really a sense of home is there. And even though we are working now currently, and there are a few Maxim's friends that I've known back then, they're actually in the same company as me. So some of them are my wow. seniors. So it's a really good place for you to network around because a lot of Malaysians are working in Singapore. You, you won't know whom are you ended up with in the same company, for instance. So all these are the networking skills that I have built up through Maxim. And other than Maxim, I participated in netball. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a sport event. So every month, every week, once once every week, I get to train up myself, get to mingle around with different people. So yeah, those are the two two uh, societies which I sign up for. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, Maxim is like a home away from home for a lot of the students, you know, like, especially if you're from, say, East Malaysia, you know, and, and you know, home is very far away. Yeah, you know, that you still have other friends, you know, and like another family of yours in Singapore that you can you know, meet up with all the time. Yeah, and then, um, of course, netball, which is interesting. And um, yeah, and a lot of people can take up sports that they never did before, you know, in SIM, you know, like a chance to push yourself and do something else that's a bit different. Yeah. So Edwin also um, is pretty active in uh, his student life. If Edwin, you could share a bit. Yeah, I think uh, for me, like I said, you know, when I came when I came to uni, one of the biggest things is really to make sure that I have fun. You know, like you come to uni, of course, you want to study, right? But at the end of the day, it's really about having fun. You know, building building that community, and and one of the actually two things. I mean, first thing was the student council. I was part of the student council. Uh, I was I was actually doing writing. I was in the editorial. You know, and in the student council, it's a it's a really interesting mix of uh, different people from different backgrounds. Yeah, and I think that's the beautiful part about being in SIM is that you're not just only um, interacting with Singaporeans, right, or your fellow Malaysians, but you're interacting with a lot of people from around uh, the world. You know, and most of the people and until today we are still friends. You know, I've got friends from Vietnam, you know, friends from the Philippines, even some as far as even like certain countries in Europe. Right? We're still friends, you know, and that's the part where for me in, in, in the student council, it was fun because we did a lot of uh, not just have fun, but we do have like community activities where we do reach out to the creator community. And that's the part where as a, as a young student coming into Singapore, right, you know, you're exposed to a lot of different opportunities. You know, you, you, you get to see the different side of, uh, of Singapore, right? not just the hustle and bustle of Singapore, but you get to see, you know, go into like the fabric of Singapore. So being in a student council allowed me to actually do that. 
And that was something where I really appreciated it. And of course, on the more health and fitness side, I joined uh, track and field. You know, I, I was trying to figure out like what, what best to do because I wanted to join badminton, you know, as a Malaysian, you know, we all really like badminton, right? And somehow or rather we think that we are like Lee Chong Wei's brother or something. I mean, for me, Ken, uh, because I'm quite close to where he originally came from, right? Penang, right? But unfortunately, I wasn't good enough. So when I went for the tryouts, it was hilarious. You know, I got, I got my butt whooped you know, by, by really good Singaporean players. So I was like, okay, no, no, no. You know, I'm not going to embarrass my fellow Malaysian people to join the team. And then like, voila, you know, it's so, so sad, right? Like a Malaysian cannot beat a Singaporean in Singapore. I mean, in, in badminton. So I ended up going for check and field, which was great, which I used to do in high school, in secondary school, you know, but it was fun because check and field allowed me to try out different sports. I used to just run, but we did a lot of things. You know, in my senior year, I remember because our team was so big, uh, I told them, I said, you know what, I'm willing to try different uh, sports. So I ended up doing javelin and shot putt. Can you imagine a sprinter doing javelin and shot putt? And I'm not like really big or like strong or muscular, right? So it was hilarious, but it was fun. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we didn't win uh, that year, but we had, we, had a good, we had a good run, you know, in the inter-varsity games where we compete with other universities. So like you do compete in big universities, like other bigger universities, like NUS, NTU and stuff. So track and field was fun. Yeah, so in terms of student life, those two uh, extracurricular activities really kept me uh, rooted. Um, not just being able to, to, to like be in a community, right? But it's also to build a lot of uh, different friendships. Yeah, and most of the friendships until today, you know, we have graduated a few years back already. Uh, we're still all really good friends. You know, and then we do, you know, still keep in touch, do help one another out in their respective uh, careers that they're in. So I think that's, that is the, that is the win, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, that's for me. Okay, thank you very much for sharing, Edwin. Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> so, um, okay, the next one, let's go to uh, Elson. So um, you've been in Singapore for quite a while. So how would you find uh, it? you know, to cope in Singapore in terms of, you know, uh, accommodation or expenses. You know, people always say Singapore is a very expensive city to, to live in, you know, but um, how true is that and how, how would you help people that are about to move to Singapore and considering it, yeah? Mm, I think, okay, from uh, like a working adult perspective, I think that's manageable because Yes, you're looking at, let's say, the dollar sign and then you translate to ringgit. It looks very expensive, but don't forget that at the same time, the income is in sing dollars. So, so if you ask me whether Singapore is a very expensive city to live in, I say um, actually it's okay because while, for example, um, maybe fresh grade will have around 3,000 sing dollar income, uh, but at the same time, you can get a plate of chicken rice for three sing dollar. So relatively, that's not too expensive. Um, but from from a student perspective, actually, I think that's manageable as well because uh, when when you look at um, staying in Australia, US, or UK, I think Singapore accommodations and expenses is still a relatively affordable uh, options. So I, I don't think it's very hard to, to, to cope with the expenses here. And then in fact, I think um, if works here and, and live here, actually um, it's pretty comfortable because um, you, you don't need a car. Um, I mean, car is an option, it's not a need because the transport here is so efficient. Every two minutes in, in the peak hours, you can get on the train and then in 30 minutes, then you can arrive from your place to, to, to your office. So, um, yeah, I, I, I will say the, the living expenses uh, here is actually quite manageable. Okay, thank you, Elson. Uh, Edwin, Aaron, do you have anything to add on to what Elson has shared? Yeah, I think I, I can just share a little bit. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, I totally agree. Yeah, you totally agree, right? Yeah, I think, I, was, I mean, for me, when I look back, when I first came to, uh, you know, Singapore, I'm not going to lie, you know, like the first week was like everything you're converting in your mind, you know, it's like, okay, if I buy a plate of chicken rice, it's $3 sing, but no, it's nine ringgit. Oh my goodness. Like it's so expensive, you know, but that happens only for a week, you know, um, I think all of us, when we first go to somewhere new, we're going to definitely have that kind of, uh, 
that kind of uh, men mentality or kind of emotions, right? But living here after that, right? You do, you do realize that the cost of living here is actually relatively uh, cheaper. You know, contrary to popular belief, right? A lot of people think that Singapore is very expensive, um, you know, because and made so by, you know, crazy rich Asians, right? The whole world probably thinks Singapore is the like, most expensive city. Yes and no. Um, as a person living here or as a student then, I realized that actually uh, accommodating to, in terms of like how the food that we eat, you know, the places that we go, the things that we do as a student, like, you know, you, you hang out, right? You actually don't spend that much. You know, I can't say if some of us here really like to do online shopping, then I don't know, God bless you, right? But if you, you know, live like a normal person, you know, like all of us would, um, it's actually cheaper, to be honest, you know, and I can back that up now because I'm in the finance industry, you know, I help people with their finances. And I do see that at the end of the day, right, um, if I compare person A in Singapore versus person B in Malaysia, same job, same career path, you know, started everything the same. The person, person A in Singapore actually is more, is, is better off because not, not, not because you earn sing dollar, right? But because of the cost of living, you know? So yeah. in terms of cost wise, um, to be honest, once you're here, you do realize that it's actually cheaper to, um, to be here. And of course, if you're thinking of going to overseas, um, that's a different ball game altogether. Yeah, but I think Singapore being being a, a, a first world country, right? You would think it's expensive, but it's not. Yeah, it's not as what most people think until you come here and then you realize it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Aaron, you wanted to add on uh, something as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for my, my case, right, I... I stayed in Singapore and I stayed in Australia before. So back after that, when I came back, so there was this publish about the uh, living cost. So Singapore was one of the top few, like the top end of like the high cost country. And I was like, huh, it's even way higher than in Australia. So I was like, huh, is that really the case? Because in Australia, the rental is almost double of what I'm actually paying in Singapore. So mm -hmm. Singapore, there are a few ways for you to cut down your cost. First and foremost is sharing. So by sharing with a friend, you actually cut the cost by half. And yep. the food-wise and transportation-wise is really reasonable. For my case, right, when I was in diploma, I first came in, same like you, Edwin, my first, I actually struggled for a month. $3, <laughs> a time three, $9. I come, when I came back home every Friday, my mom, mm -hmm. so how, how much do you spend for your food? I said, three, huh, then it's 10 ringgit. So that was actually <laughs> the initial phase where everyone, I suppose, that yes, everyone yes. struggle. But if you're doing the costing like, in ratio-wise, it's actually very much affordable. Mm -hmm. Because let's say three dollars chicken rice, but if you're in KL, chicken rice there is like ten ringgit, so it's like three times. So if you don't do the uh, multiplication, it's actually just nice. And for working adult wise, if you are in those city in Malaysia, definitely you're gonna need a car for some, for instance, because the public transportation there is not as developed as Singapore. Singapore we have MRT, we have a lot of direct buses, so all the transport costs being like in ratio wise, right? It's actually much more easier for you to save up your first bucket of gold. I have seen people coming in, they actually apply for PR in Singapore because just from their personal experience, my customers from the bank, uh, in, in, in KL, they are, they are both um, postgraduate, they are holding a master degree, but when they are in, they're working in biotech company and they, are, they were in KL, Previously, their pay was around five, six, we paid five to six K ringgit, but wasn't enough for them to afford a house because the living expenses there were really high. Wow. So they came into Singapore, they got their PR, and a few months later, they actually opted out for HDP for six hundred thousand uh, sing dollars. So they actually shared with me how they actually um, they changed their uh, their career to Singapore, and their earning capacity is so much higher, and they are able to save up more. Because every thousand dollars you save it, three thousand ringgit. So something like that. So working, yeah. I would say studying here is a really good investment. Every every single penny worth it, really worth it. So I'm actually really grateful for my our first decision to actually study here and eventually end up here and working here as a whole. Yeah. 
Thank you, Aaron, for sharing. Uh, it's interesting to know sort of like the reality of it, you know, from real personal experiences that we all know as well. Yeah, so um, let's um, get back to Elson again. Um, so when did, um, we'll go into the career portion of it, okay, of the session. So for Elson, like when do you know that accountancy was something you wanted to go into? Was it during high school or like, you know, which point of your, yeah? Um, I, I, because I graduated, uh, I studied in Fonyu High School, uh, JB, which is an independent school. So at that point of time, um, um, in the school, I think quite different from uh, Sekolah Manana. Um, so actually, there's a divergence. So either you can go science or you can go uh, to the art and commerce stream. So at that point of time, I know science is, is not my kind of thing. So I decided to go into art and commerce. So which is focused, uh, one of the focus is actually accounting, bookkeeping. So at that point of time, um, I still remember uh, my, my high school student, but my high school teacher tell me that, you know, um, accounting is like your second life in your, in your study. If let's say you didn't do well in, in your science paper or you didn't do well in all the uh, language paper, you know, this is a fresh start. You, you can start everything all together because uh, everyone will be on the uh, same starting point, debit credit. So, um, yeah, I, 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 right now I still remember and then I, I really appreciate that, you know, I, um, I had the, uh, the opportunity at that point of time to start learning the accounting at a very, very early stage. So actually at that point of time, that built my foundation in terms of bookkeeping. So, um, uh, back to your questions, why I choose accountancies. I think relatively, um, accountancy is, is, a, is a line where relatively stable and then it's one of the professions. Um, so um, like, like uh, an example is um, after I, I finished my ACC qualifications, then I know that uh, if you are good, then you, you can go into one of the big four and then uh, maybe spend a couple of years there to gain the uh, qualifications. After we got the qualifications, then we can think if we want to continue to work in a professional environment or we want to join into a more commercial environment. Commercial environment means that um, like, uh, um, we, we will be the one that prepare the financial accounts. Uh, we will be the one that prepare all the financial reports um, uh, for the management. So um, I, I, I found that, um, you know, um, maybe a professional environment is not what I'm, I really like. I, I, I actually like to hands-on and then do the numbers by myself. So at the end, after I got my uh, qualifications, then I joined uh, one of the listicle in, in Singapore. Um, uh, so I, I, for why I joined, why I choose accountancy, I think it was because um, that, that is something that interesting to me uh, because every time when I see that the balance becomes zero, then I was like, yes, I did it. <laughs> so, so I think, yeah. It, um, yeah. So, so everyone that did the account before then will 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 know that the the the, the achievement, the sense of achievement when you see the balance it finally balance, zero, right? It finally finally balance, balance. right? Finally balanced. Yes, yeah. I I found that's quite, um, yeah. I I, I like the feeling. So, uh, <laughs> that's why I'm I'm an accountant. Okay, thank you for sharing. So you um, can see also, yeah, it's, it's a nice story and also to, to know that, oh, okay, it all started all the way from like high school, something that your teacher said, yeah, which is amazing. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, Edwin, what about you? How, you, you studied sociology in, in, in UB. Yes. Yeah, yes. so far, I think the, the, switch, yeah. um, the interesting part is that I, I mean, I've, I've always enjoyed financial consultancy, you know, because my dad did it for, you know, for the longest time, for a good 40 years. You know, and I saw a lot of value in doing that, you know, because he had a lot of time to spend with us. So I realized that, you know, in a, in a particular career that I want to choose, I want to be able to do something that I'm um, able to still have a very good family life, you know. So that was one of the key things that prompted me to follow that line. And the interesting part is that why I ended up graduating with a sociology degree was um, interesting because I actually went into UB doing business. <clears throat> You know, back in Inti Penang, I was doing business courses, business modules, you know, and that was the kind of direction that I wanted to, you know. And of course, when I came to UB, you know, all the business modules was fun. Some of it was a little bit challenging, right? But then I stumbled upon sociology, which 
to be honest, at that point of time, not many people were doing it, you know, and let alone to graduate with a degree with sociology was something that is pretty much unheard of, right? A lot of people with psychology, you know, business, you know, um, what else? Bachelor of Arts or whatnot. Accountancy like, like, like Elson, right? Yeah, but for me, I was like, hey, sociology was something that is very interesting. So in my line of work, I already knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to go into the financial services uh, industry, you know, which is financial consulting, right? And I knew that at that point of time, um, I didn't need to have a specific degree, right? But as long as I had a degree. So to me, I felt that it would be a good talking point or a starting point, right? Whenever people ask me, hey, you know, you're in this industry, what did you graduate with? Then usually when I show them my name card, they'll, the first thing they'll look at is not my name, not my position that I hold or the awards or the number of years that I've been in the company. But they'll ask me, huh, you're in financial consultancy and you're a sociology graduate. So to me, it's like, yes, that's a win because that's the first thing that they realize, right? And it opens up a door of conversation. And in my line of work, it's all about talking to people, you know, understanding them. Um, like for Elson, his, his, his joy is to get the balance, right? To zero, to balance. For me, my joy is at the end of the day, all my clients, they need to get their balances from zero to a very high number that they want to get. That's my, uh, that's my joy. So when they're able to do that, right? You know, it, it's something that brings a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, so for, for me, um, doing sociology, um, at the end of the day, it's not just about, you know, doing sociology, but in UB itself, um, I did take a lot of business modules. So it does inter intercross, you know, and at the end of the day, when I graduated, I felt that I graduated with actually more than just one degree because I had the business knowledge, I had the finance knowledge, I had the economics knowledge, but I also had the sociology point of view. Yeah, which was a really, really plus point. So until today, you know, I've graduated coming to yeah, many years. I'm not going to say how many years, right? But every time when someone picks up my name card, that's the first thing that they ask. You know, like, what are you, why do you have a sociology degree? And then that's how I start talking to them. And that's how I built, you know, relationships and, and business at the end of the day. Yeah, so that's pretty much for me why I started and why I'm still in the financial consultancy industry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Edwin. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, we don't have we don't have any sociology graduates um usually, right? Especially in Malaysia when it's not really yeah. a popular go to thing. But we can see that how even with a degree you can go into the finance sector in a way or not. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh Aaron, what about you? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, you yeah, referring back to Elson, your greatest uh you really like to balance everything like for accountant. I hate it up <laughs> <laughs> because even at DMS, from all my modules, right, I can't balance it, but the numbers were close. Just, I can't balance it. So, I, yeah, so I'm not really gifted in accounting. Okay, um, so back to uh, career, career-wise, I, okay, my dad, he's an engineer. So, he was actually really enthused in, in engineering. So, since young, he's been sharing that engineer, engineer, how good, how good is it? Uh, make you like a comfortable life, don't you know, make money, something like that. Okay, so. In primary school, I used to remember my teacher always like, write down your chita chita, if you guys still remember. We'll definitely be engineer, doctor, cheku. Throughout my whole <laughs> primary school, that was the... No lawyer, sequence. lawyer. Or no lawyer. Lawyer. <laughs> Back then, still young, you know, that's lawyer. Okay. So, second day school, uh, I took science. So, I was actually uh, aiming to be engineer at first. So, all the way to 18 A-level, I took science because of trying to go into, fit, fit myself into engineering part. But mm -hmm. along the way, as we are learning more, the modules get even tougher. The uh, A-level itself is pretty tough for myself. So I was doing all the calculations, all the, uh, all the homework. Then I was thinking, does it really relate to my life? Does it really relate to what I want to achieve next time? Because for me, I'm a really, uh, I like to talk. I like to communicate with people. Like at win like the job school, like meeting new people. Instead of like, Meeting machines like engineer, I think time for I think why not just try out something else? But I didn't know what to do. I want to do something like like that, that description, but what what is it? So fortunately enough, I my bank my I accompanied my dad to a bank. So he has his own banker who's managing his funds. So my dad went to the toilet. Of course I was pretty shy. I didn't dare to ask anything from my dad. 
I think his internet has some issues. Wait, Aaron, sorry, the line is a bit breaking. The line's breaking okay, a bit. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. better now? Yeah, okay. yeah. So he might repeat the last that. sentence. Yeah. Okay, okay. So back to the banker. So he told me, hey, do you know actually I came from education? Huh? I was only 18 then. Your dad actually invested in something you know, for you and your two other brothers for your education. Then the way he, he spoke to me is really, really connecting. You know, I say, oh, that's maybe that's the, 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 uh, the job I wanted to, like, wow. to, to be involved in, to like, communicate with people and solve people's like, uh, the, uh, their problems. People always go to the banker. They say, hey, how to grow my money? How to grow my wealth? So investment is one thing I picked up from him. He shared with me some shares, whatever, but I still uh, wasn't able to get it. So since that day, when I was 18, forget which month reading, really, I said, okay, I wanted to be a banker. So that's where I started to uh, choose my uni, choose the courses. And for finance economics, it's more like um, finance is more like calculation, like interest to know how to like, uh, back, like uh, calculate the interest we want. And economics is more like demand and supply which sometimes applicable for investment. So all this generally all like added up together. It's really helpful when I first started the job because financial products, we have like insurance. You need to calculate as well, like, like uh, you know, the interest, whatever, and investment, supply and demand. You need to know what's going on in the world, like demands up, then what's going to happen, supply is it increased, what's going what's gonna, to uh, affect. So all these are really uh, essential and pretty crucial when, you, when I'm in this um, banking industry, especially. Yeah, so we have a pretty like a head start from people. First, I have cohorts. My cohort member, we have people from like hospitality and uh, people from like uh, uh, engineering or something. So, in terms of financial product knowledge, we are more well equipped for. So, we have a better head start. Lah. You have a better like a benefit for yourself. Yeah. Mm, okay. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Erin. So, I hope that your dad was okay when, when you finally decided to not take up engineering. <laughs> Yeah, he's totally okay. <laughs> okay. You're doing yeah. well, so yeah, he's definitely happy yeah. for you as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so in terms of, because um, you've uh, all been, in, uh, especially uh, Elson and Edwin, you've been in the career for quite a while, and so you also know how the hiring trends are. So just now we touched a bit on it, but if let's say you had one tip for students or graduates, you know, uh, on you know how to get your first job uh, and what skills they should have or what, uh, character or personality or you know that, that they should have as a to go into the finance sector what what would you be what would that one thing be uh, i will say um you know when when you are in university just uh, uh join different group of people you know start to you know come come up from your comfort zone because in singapore you you meet a lot of people that come from different places of the world you might have a friend that come from Korea, Japan, Australia, and different parts of the world. So, so actually that, that will give us the opportunity to understand, you know, um, the, uh, the cultures and then, you know, how to talk to different people. Like um, right now in my office, I have, um, I have team members that come from Portland. I have team members that come from New Zealand, um, of course, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia. So, so um because in, in Singapore in such a such a city that is so diversified, so so when, when we do hiring, we, we really want to see the the X factor. Uh, again back to the at the beginning when we say um what you can bring to the table, um like whether you can you can interact well with the existing team because um you know like um like uh, like new work previously um, when people focus on the qualification but right now yes people still looking at it but it's just like key to enter the door but after you they they recognize you that okay academic academically you you qualify but whether you can interact uh, with the team well whether you can work with the team um, uh, and then whether whether you, you you have the right chemistry so I will say um, you know come up from the comfort zone and then, you know, try to understand, talk to different people and then try different things. So, so that can expose yourself to, to so many cultures in, in Singapore. And then that actually will give the, the new graduates the advantage to, to, uh, to, to land them in, in a job. Because while, 
when when you talk to the interviewer, they 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 want to know. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe because we all know that you know these are fresh grades. Of course, they are not as uh, experienced, but we want to see whether whether they have the the quality that you know they can grow with the team, and then they whether they are willing to try uh, new things, and then whether they are they are they they can you know um learn something from from the opportunities that given by the teams and so so i think um as long as during the um interview process then the candidate is able to demonstrate that um i i don't think that is is difficult to 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 get a job in Singapore. Mm. Thank you, Elson. That's very good advice. So yeah, for students out there or, um, or graduates, you know, do take note of that. Um, yeah, and uh, Edwin, do you have anything to add on to this? Yeah, I, I think um, job application or rather, um, you know, looking for a career, right, doesn't start in your final year, to be honest. You know, what, what employers look at or what we look at nowadays is that what have you been doing since the start of your, of your program? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's it's not just about you know a, a lot of people would tend to only start looking for internships or careers, jobs or whatever at the final year, you know, towards the end of their education, right? But in Singapore, what I want to tell you guys is that the advice is once you're in, right, connect yourselves to as many opportunities as you can find. Yeah, because at the end of the day, um, when you come to an interviewer's table. Yeah, first thing is, yes, we will look at your qualification, right? We will see, okay, you meet the criteria that you can come in. And usually we don't do that. Usually, personally for me, like I shared, usually my secretary will do that, right? They will look at, okay, this person qualifies. But when we come, the first thing I want to know is that to know who you are as a person and not about your relationship, your boyfriend, girlfriend, no, but what have you been doing in your, you know, entire four years of, you know, university uh, so-called journey, right? Do you spend time just with your books, right? Or do you just spend time going out to say, hey, you know, I want to plant myself in the community. I want to find out more different um, opportunities, how I can, you know, grow what I'm studying. Yeah. So like, for example, you know, if I'm studying sociology and I'm doing business modules, I do plant myself in different areas that allow me to network, right? And <clears throat> in between, if I can find <clears throat> opportunities, right? To go into the certain field, I would do it. Yeah. So the job application doesn't start. I mean, my advice is very simple. The job application doesn't start in the final year, but it actually starts the moment you step into university. Yeah. So, you know, that's the main point uh, for me. Mm. Okay, thank you, Edwin. So yeah, for students, if you're in school, you know, do join uh, the student life or whether if you can get an internship, even though Malaysians can't work in Singapore under student pass, but you know, you can still um, either go back to Malaysia to do your internship or, you know, you could um, join um, CCAs and, you know, build up your leadership skills along the way. Yeah. And for Aaron, Aaron, um, because you are the freshest graduate among the three here. So in terms of your own experience, what do you think yeah. helped you stand out during your interview? Okay, uh, uh, okay, I'll share something embarrassing. So actually, I did two interviews before I got a job. So the first job offer was actually from OCPC. Uh, I actually uh, like uh, fuck it up. So back then, I was just thinking how to, like, uh, how to make my next interview even better. So I actually restructured my, my resume. I did everything from stuff. So throw back to uh, uni life. First, my first resume was all. All about studying this, like what they achieve, rather than the, uh, what you call it, that the, the curriculum, the, uh, the soft skill that you have, like leadership role. So as you are in university, you actually have a lot of opportunities. That actually, uni university is the best, the best in my life. Sorry, Yuen, you're breaking up a bit again. You get alive to the. Hello? 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 Yeah. Okay, I think it's working. Okay, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. So one thing then I added on to make myself a more interesting person is like I will share more like what I do in, in Australia. Because Australia, I was actually a leader in the root supervisor in a, in a hot pot shop. So I began to add all these things in. So all these things are only uh, uh, 
uh, only possible if you are able to take a first step out of the comfort zone rather than just like being a student like studying you uh, make time even more like uh, okay you make full use of your time you can also get exposure more like in medicine or even some societies some clubs you can be the uh, secretary president whatever so all these things right are the really plus bonus because for in Singapore, there's a lot of undergraduates coming up every year. So what actually makes you special? What actually makes you um, like a more interesting person for the interviewer to find out more? So it's where you actually merge your IQ and definitely you actually you actually work with people. So all these skills they are in university time is a really good place, a really good time for you to nurture it. Um, yeah, that's what I want to share. Mm. Okay, thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, that's second interview. Hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry, the first interview was that. The second interview, I changed my resume, everything. So everything was pretty smooth. Okay. You, you, are, you are more confident. Just share with your interviewer, and she's pretty, she's pretty like, okay, I can see the smile from her face. Then somehow knew I got recruited from that from the uh, interaction yeah mm. mm -hmm. okay thank you so i do realize that a lot of times when it's a yeah. good interview you'll realize that they don't really go into too much of detail in what your resume is but just the conversation that's ongoing because they can feel that oh you're a good fit to the company or you're a good fit to their team and they enjoy talking to you so and this is very vital especially if in terms of um, you know what you have done in school apart from your school itself because yeah when you graduate um there are so many graduates now right but make what makes you different and what makes you uh, memorable after you leave the room that that's what really uh, will stick with the employer's mind yeah so okay um so um, in the interest of time we will have one last question if anyone would like to think about what question you would like to ask if not um, Edwin Elson and Aaron will actually um, give their last word of advice but before that while you all think about your last word of advice I will share a bit about um, the programs that uh, Edwin Elson and Aaron are from or the universities that they are from and share a bit about SIM and then uh, we will come back to the three advices from them the important advice that they will have for us Okay, so uh, I hope everyone can see the screen. Yeah, so yeah, uh, basically I'm part of the rep office. There's um, uh, four of us in the Malaysia rep office in, uh, and in KL. Um, our office is at Gardens North Tower. So um, a bit of uh, introduction to SIM if you don't already know. Okay, we have students from over 40 countries right now. We have a beautiful campus which you would see at the bottom of this screen and also behind me. Yeah, and we have 82.8% of our graduates who actually find jobs within six months after their final exams. Yeah, we have about 3,500 international students. So if you join us, don't worry, you won't be alone. There'll be, you know, like Maxim, like Erin has shared, you know, that, you know, a home away from home for you. Yeah, and we about have about 17,000 students in total. Yeah, and we also have um, close to 80 uh, student clubs, which is, you know, including like track and field or netball, as uh, some of our alumni have shared also. And we have also 165,000 alumni, which also proves how uh, many alumni is out there who will be able to help you also when it comes to finding your first job and, you know, for you to network with and to find out more about the skills that you require along the way. So just to share a bit about the education pathways in Malaysia. So um, you can actually come into SIM from your SPM or O levels. Um, and um, you can also come in after your UEC uh, A levels or STPM. So if you were from SPM O levels or UEC, you can actually go in through our foundation or our diploma first in SIM Global Education. And that will be about from six months onwards to about 15 months, depending on which uh, program you take. And then, then you will then be able to choose the different programs that we have. Um, so um, you will see you have we have programs from UK, Australia, and US. Um, so like for example, the UK ones will be University of London, which is um, where uh, Elson is from. Uh, he took the master's program there. Uh, University of Stirling. We have RMIT, which is where Erin is from, uh, and also University of Wollongong. And we also have UB, which is where Edwin is from. So these programs, um, you can come in from whether your UEC or your A-levels or STPM, or you can actually, depending on your results, you can also go through our programs first. So for example, Aaron, he, he chose to go in through our diploma first to get his um, foundation in, in terms of business before he went on into his finance uh, program. 
So the university partners. So first of all, we have University of London, which is uh, where Elson is from. Okay, it's established in 1836 and one of the oldest and biggest universities in the world. So we have academic directions from three esteemed colleges. So it's Goldsmith, which is mainly um, our computer science programs, uh, UCL and um, LSE, which are you know very famous, uh, popular and well-renowned um, universities in the world. And then we also have um, close to 2,000 SIMU graduates with first-class honours to date, which um, we have a lot of um, great first-class honours students coming out of uh, UOL every year. So these are some of the programs that you will be able to find in our the university in UOL. And for RMIT, so it's one of Australia's original education institutions then dating back all the way to 1887. And this is where Erin is from. So you have the opportunity to also go there for a semester if you like. Um, it's ranked 15th in the, uh, uh, among the universities in Australia and also um, in 12th in the world um, in terms of uh, Australia for art and design. And so some of the programs that we have are here. Um, you see accountancy, economics and finance. Some students also choose to take up logistics and supply chain, uh, professional communications, yeah, and aviation. So for University at Buffalo, which is where Edwin is from, it's uh, founded in 1846 and one of the leading public universities in US. It's ranked the first public university in the New York State, and it's also the first public university in New York to be admitted to the prestigious Association of American Universities. So over here, you will see some of our programs like our business administration. We have an interesting um, new program also called Geographic Information Science, which is basically, you know, people behind like our Google Maps and Waves, you know, people who are behind the scene. Yeah, this is one program that you might be interested in. Um, or there's also programs in communications, economics, psychology, sociology, like uh, Edwin was from, and international trade. And over here, you can take double majors or double degrees as well. So for scholarship, okay, um, basically we have a SIM Global Education Diploma Scholarship, which is only for international students. And um, we also have the SIM Global Education Scholarship, which is both to the Singapore citizens, PR, and also international students. Um, both of them will require outstanding academic results. So it's a, basically an award for students that are doing well in school. And the scholarship actually covers um, your full tuition fee um, for the diploma um, scholarship. And for the, um, the SM Global Education Scholarship, it actually covers your tuition fee, exam fees, your um, book allowance, and some of the other compulsory fees. And the best thing is that it's no bond attached to both of the scholarships. So um, also we have talked a bit about the student life. So we actually have a very um, holistic student life here at uh, SIM. So even though it's a private institution, we have all these uh, catered for students. So we have the Career Development Office, which basically helps you with your resume. We have workshops for you. Um, they bring in uh, alumni back you know, to the school to share a bit more with um, you and mentor you as well. We also have our own unicorn portal, which is basically a portal like a job street, but specifically for SIM students so that you can find your internship and your jobs. The picture on the bottom left is the career fair that we organize twice a year. Um, and it's always, um, you know, 100 over companies come over, more than 1,000 uh, students will attend each year. And we also have student care because we do care about how your well-being is. So whether it's your um, regards to, you know, your stress management, your uh, how to build positive relationships and how to be resilient, we have talks and workshops there for you. And we also have student, the Student Learning Centre, which is, you know, uh, where we have peers assisting you in your studies and we also, there's also consultation services there. Um, we also have global learning, which is uh, the summer and winter abroad. Um, so, for example, um, some students will maybe go to LSE or specific different partner universities that we work with during their break. So, for example, in University of London, they have a three months break. Where do they go to? They can go to another country's um, uh, university to, you know, have an experience there. So, and these exchanges can um, be from two to eight weeks, depending on how much you're willing to spend on this. So, there is an opportunity to go overseas, even though you come over to SIM. And then uh, last but not least, our student development. We have over 70 clubs and they are very, they're very, very interesting clubs, um, you know, like fencing and uh, you know, areas that people don't use. Maybe in Malaysia, we don't really get a chance to do in our high schools. Um, yeah, but then there are a lot of students that actually do, do um, um, take part in all this and, you know, get exposed to different types of uh, uh, clubs that they were not able to before. So there's also student council, you know, which uh, is like, for example, Edwin in the UB student council, being able to plan events for the st uh, students of UB. And, you know, there's sports and fitness clubs, uh, like Aaron joining uh, netball and Edwin joining track and field, arts and culture clubs, um, special interest clubs. There's also things like in terms of religion, for example, if you're in a, a Christian fellowship or, you know, um, areas like this. And also the international student club, which is like Maxim, which we mentioned earlier for Malaysian students. 
So if you have any questions, please feel free to write to us um, over here. Um, our office is over here as well. Um, we will be starting work next week um, back in the office at least. Um, so please feel free to drop us an email um, and we will answer to you um, as soon as we see your email. And yep. So next week, we have one session on IT. So if you have any friends that are interested or you may be interested in maybe IT as well, uh, we do have a session next week um, and you can register at this bit.ly um, slash cc underscore IT. So we have a student from our uni University of Wollongong who will be sharing about his experience and how he's working now in Singapore. So thank you very much. Um, this is my part. So now we will get back to the advice, the important advice from the three of our alumni here. Uh, so uh, Elson, would you like to go first in terms of yeah, the advice you yeah, have for sure. students? Yeah, thank you. Just no problem. Um, I think talk about advice then, I actually try to think what kind of advice I can offer. So I, I think about when, when I just graduated from high school and then what was the biggest questions I, I, what I wish someone could, could give me advice. Uh, I, I think it's more like, okay, uh, in future, what am I going to do? What's the things that I'm going to do the rest of my you know, life? So um, I, I, I will say, um, um, just go with something that you are good at. And then from what you are good at, you find something that you like. So in my case, um, yeah, I, I was good at accounting to, you know, to get everything balanced, zero. And, um, and then that's one of the things that I like to do. So, so that's why at the end I decided to do the ACCA qualifications. Um, then I, I think actually this kind of compliments, you know, because you are good and then you like to do it. So because you like to do it, then you become better because you are better than you like it more. So um, I, I think if, if you are a student that's still not sure what are you going to do, I think um, you, you can start from like a business. I think, uh, I think that's what uh, Aaron did. Uh, you can start from business then. From there, there's a lot of topic, a lot of subject. And from there, you can see what's the things that you like or you are good at. Then from there, you can choose uh, where you want to further the study. So then hopefully that will, will lend you to a job that you want. So I, I think that's my advice. Okay, thank you very much, Elson, uh, for your wonderful advice. Uh, Edwin, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. Okay, for me, it's uh, apart from what Elson shared, you know, what you like and what you enjoy. I think for me, it's always very simple to say that do something that you can uh, wake up to every morning. You know, like if you're going to do something that is um, challenging, you know, every morning you wake up, oh no, you've got to do statistics, you've got to do certain things, then Trust me, that is not something that you want to do, uh, be it study or even work at, you know, because it's just going to be very, very stressful in the long run, you know. So I would say that in choosing your course, in choosing uh, which direction to go, do something that, you know, think of what you would enjoy doing uh, every day, like without even, uh, you know, thinking you can just wake up and say, hey, you know, I'm happy doing this, you know, and I enjoy doing it. Yeah, and I think that is a good start into choosing your your courses, you know, in, in, in terms of where you want to study, which university as well, you know, and it will lead on to the next path on once you like what Elson said, once you enjoy, right? Somehow or rather you will just tend to, you know, go on in that path of building, growing and learning more about it. Yeah. So for me back then, I have to be honest, I knew what I wanted to do. And, but the problem is that I didn't know what course to take, you know. Mm. And I remember one of my, you know, uh, more senior friends told me, do something that you enjoy. Do something that you can wake up to every morning. Yeah, and at the end of the day, that's, that's what I did. And, you know, to be honest, I look back, I don't regret. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's my two cents worth of advice to share with all of you. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Edwin. Um, yep. uh, okay. Yeah. For me, myself, back then, I was really a headless fly. I was banging around, like playing around. But actually, if you guys are free, if you don't mind, you can just go Google and you can do some personality tests. So I, for me, my say it's really helpful. We can see what kind of personality you are. So from there, you can explore more into the careers options for like, if you are someone really sociable, you are suitable for which kind of career. If you are someone who is more, more quick, people and analytical can be like, suitable for engineering or some stuff. So uh, once you're able to like to like to know what's your personality like, you can start planning. 
So if you want to play safe, play safe, you can go for DMS. You know, DMS, you have a really good one year to actually mingle around, to play with the subjects, to see uh, like uh, which subject actually you like the most. So from there, from DMS, because DMS is a really generalized uh, study. So you can actually go to any university you want. You can go to UB, you can go to RMIT, UL, any courses which you like. So actually, you can actually buy yourself more time, more exposure from it, more just to play safe. Lah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah. So yeah, like he mentioned, like Aaron mentioned, you know, um, yeah, the, the diploma is one good option that a lot of students choose to go to, uh, because it's also sort of like the first year of your university. Because straight after that, you go into RMIT and it's a year and a half left, right, to graduate. So uh, a lot of students do choose to go to the diploma first to see which area of finance maybe that they're interested in. So and yeah, Elson and Erin did mention also about you know choosing something that you like because if you like and and are willing to wake up every morning to do this thing, you will, you will just snowball into something that's better and greater because you are you really have an interest in it and you also do well in both your studies and your career. So um, thank you very much, um, Elson, Aaron and Erin for your time today. We really appreciate you uh, sharing with our students here in Malaysia. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any last questions, I wish I don't see any at the moment, but if there's anything else, please feel free to email us. And we will answer you um, accordingly. And if you have any questions for this uh, 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 alumni, please also let us know and we will direct the questions to them. So if not, um, everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, have a good long weekend, even though you will still be at home regardless. But I hope you have a, a good weekend. And, uh, Selamat Hari Raya <laughs> to anyone that's celebrating it. Okay, so um, thank you very much again. Thank you, Alson. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you, Aaron. Take care. All right. All right. Take care. See you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.